Hello everybody, this is our timber harvesting and forest products lecture uh, for introduction to forestry. So uh, the biggest thing that I want to try and convey to you during this lecture is just how do we go from this picture here of working in the forest with all these standing trees and then cutting them down to then this, which is this idea of turning it into uh, dimensional lumber for a house or turning it into furniture or turning it into just logs that get used for things or doors or all these things that wood gets gets used for in our daily life. How do we get it from, from this forest scenario and this harvesting process into, into our living rooms or into the, our actual homes themselves? And so the idea of the goal for this lecture is to link the, the silver cultural objective of sustaining a forest commodity and other values with the industrial purpose of harvesting trees to produce goods for human consumption. So in other words, the idea that because we because forests do well with with uh, disturbance and we know that disturbance is helpful. So if one of the things we can do to create a disturbance uh, is logging. How can we um, how can we use that uh, as part of our uh, managing of the forest, but then also use it to make it uh, to turn these trees into a natural resource that we're actually using and actually um, is bringing benefit to our lives. That's that's kind of what we're talking about here in terms of timber harvesting and forest products. So harvesting or logging. So it's the process of felling, which is the idea of taking a tree from standing to on the ground, felling, removing, on-site processing, and loading of trees or logs for transport to a mill or other uh, processing facility because um, there's um, other types of facilities, not just uh, mills these days. Uh, and harvesting includes all the operations, so cutting uh, all the operations that include cutting and extracting trees or getting them um, from the stand. And so really it's the whole process, the felling, the removing, the on-site processing. So uh, usually for um, most places that's uh, delimbing of, of logs and then loading them onto the trees and getting them transported to the mill. All that counts as the timber harvesting process. And so this right here is just some different terminology. I'm going to move myself out of the way here. Um, just some definitions of different things uh, to get used to um, just in case you you're not um, familiar with some of these terms so buck the term bucking means cutting the trunk to the, a desirable length delimbing means cutting branches and limbs from fallen trees Extra extraction removing trees or logs from uh, where they grew to some delivery point felling which we already talked about that's cutting trees using the saws or mechanized equipment forwarding forwarding is hauling logs by lifting them off the ground and carrying them to a landing a landing is a cleared area for storing the logs or trees after skidding or yarding or forwarding. All those things we'll talk about. A log is any portion of the bowl after it's delimbed and topped. Uh, when we talk about measurements, um, we'll, we'll, we talk about the idea that a log is, is 16 feet specifically. But that's uh, when we're dealing with measurements. When we're just talking harvesting, a log is any portion of the bowl or the trunk or the stem that's been delimbed and um, topped. A harvester is a machine that fells trees, removes branches, and cuts them into logs. Skidding is hauling logs behind tractors by sliding them across the ground from the stump to the landing. Topping is cutting the upper stem and crown of a tree from the main trunk. And yarding is hauling logs to a landing by a yard system um, using cables, grounds, or helicopters. And so this is the timber harvesting process, this step four. So if we kind of put this into a whole civil cultural cycle, um, we'd be uh, having our establishment. So we're planting trees. We'd be then growing trees, um, having our um, intermediate kind of phase, our tending phase where we're growing trees and we're managing our trees. And then we get to our harvesting part of the civil cultural process, which we're going to take these standing trees here and we're going to turn them into these logs. We're going to load them on a truck 
and then we're going to take them out of there and start the whole process over again. So let's talk about the harvesting process overall. So in red here, I put planning, operations, and transport. Those are our three main parts or three main phases of the harvesting process. We're going to have a planning phase, we're going to have an operations phase, and then we're going to have the transport phase. Those are our three, three parts or three phases of the harvesting process. And within that, we've got these other parts to the process, having a harvest plan, building any roads or landings needed to be able to go execute the harvest plan, felling the trees, cutting them down, taking them to the landing, processing them at the landing, and then transporting them out off of the property and taking them to the mill or other facility. So the first part of it, the planning phase. We want to come up with uh, pre-harvest plans uh, for whichever property we're doing. Um, usually these are going to be have an overview of the property. They're going to have some sort of access or operational guidelines saying you got to come in off this road. Um, all the trees should be cut this way. Um, if we're using best management practices, best management practices should be observed. It's going to have the, all those sorts of ideas. Um, if we need to uh, make it even more obvious, specific truck and skid access. So the idea of um, if there's any special considerations that need to be um, put forward. Um, any sort of closures or, of roads or landings. So if you're going to um, have the roads be done a certain way or um, once it's being used and you don't want it to be a road anymore, um, what has to be done uh, afterwards, That all that stuff should be in your pre-harvest plan. And then usually a map of the area should be attached as well. And that's, that's good basics to a, a pre-harvest plan. Uh, in terms of forest roads, um, there's three types of roads. There's permanent roads, there's seasonal roads, and there's temporary roads. Permanent roads, you're going to be using them year-round. Seasonal roads, you only have access during the dry season. And then temporary roads, usually only for a short uh, duration of time and for a designated purpose. Um, you'll hear the term skid trails a lot um, um, because we talked about uh, skidding logs and uh, pulling them from the stump to the landing. So because you're pulling a log along the ground, you're basically going to almost create a road and the or a trail, and those, uh, those are called skid trails. And so a lot of places you might not want to have your skid trails um, be open or have people think that they're roads, so you might want to do something to, to close that off after you're, after you're done. So in terms of operations, our second part, kind of the, the exciting part of uh, timber harvesting, we've got three basic systems in timber harvesting. We've got whole tree systems where you're going to fell and skid the entire tree out of there. So the idea that um, a machine or a person is going to cut down the tree and then you're going to have a skidder come in there and pull that whole tree out and take it to the landing. Um, you might have tree length systems so you're going to delim and top the tree at the stump and then skid the usable portion to the landing so the difference here would be i cut down the tree the machine or a person cuts down the tree and then right there at the stump i'm going to take off all the limbs i'm going to take off the top and i'm just going to pull out the log that i'm using and take that to the landing and then you have cut to length systems which are going to fell delim and top the tree to where it falls and then you're going to cut the trunk into whatever size logs um, usually 16 foot logs um, but whatever size um, you're looking for and cut them right there at the at the at the uh, stump and then you're going to take those logs and move the logs to the landing so those are our three basic systems whole tree tree to length and cut to length So what does that kind of look like? So on the left here, we've got a whole tree supply chain. So here's our forest. We've got our uh, harvesting machine here that's going to cut down the whole tree, takes that whole tree, um, sticks it in the, uh, in the other machine here. We're going to take it to the landing. We're going to load it up. 
It's going to take it to uh, the mill and get it processed. You can also have kind of the same thing happening with somebody who's just cutting it down with a chainsaw instead of a machine. So this guy cuts down the tree out of the forest. We have our skitter um, pull it to the landing. Landing, we have some sort of a processing machine that then turns it into logs. And then we have our throw the logs on a truck and have them um, disappear. Uh, more, most of the job sites that I've been on, um, we're usually um, having a machine doing the cutting because it just goes a lot quicker. Which one of these systems are, are you going to use? It's determined by local customs. So what do they do in that area? Or what is the most prominent use of uh, the, the wood or the logs in that area? Uh, might also be determined by the size of the area scheduled for harvesting. So do you have room to do cut to, cut to length? Do you have the equipment to do the cut to length? Or uh, is really just whole tree a lot easier? Most of the places I've been to, it's all just whole tree um, systems. The nature of the harvesting contractor's business as well might um, might um, change things. Like if you're only doing um, pulp wood, or um, or if you're uh, doing uh, uh, doing a business where you're selling, not only are you selling the logs, but you're selling the top wood and the limbs as well, you're not going to want to do something like a cut to length system because what's going to happen is you're going to um, leave a bunch of that wood in the forest. Whereas if you're somebody who's also, you're selling the logs and you're selling the top wood and you're selling um, the limbs and all that for biomass, you're going to want to do more like a whole tree, take all that stuff to the landing. This truck gets the logs, this truck gets the top wood, this truck gets all the, the limbs and the, and the chips, and they're all going to different mills and that way um, you can get uh, money from, from all the parts of the tree and use up more of the tree. So it, it kind of will depend on what harvesting business is being done as well. Uh, it's important when thinking about operations to also understand the idea that there are regulations and there are rules that need to be um, followed. And here in California, the California forest practice rules are going to be what's important. And those are a series of regulations on how harvesting should be done. And they're, they go through uh, CAL FIRE. Uh, one of the big things um, with uh, the California Forest Practice Rules is the idea of having a timber harvesting plan. That's our idea of a, a pre-harvest plan. Uh, the, the timber harvest plan is a formal environmental review document that must be prepared by a reg registered professional forester and approved by, the, by CAL FIRE prior to any commercial harvesting of timber in the state. Um, these forest practice rules, what do... Oops. What do the forest practice rules cover? Um, they cover the review appeal enforcement processes. They cover the civil cultural systems and your regeneration method that you're going to use, your harvesting practices, your erosion control to make sure we're not making a mess environmentally, uh, the site preparation you're going to do, the water course protection you're going to do, any sensitive watershed designations. So um, do you have any streamside management zones or anything um, that we have to worry about? Uh, the wildlife habitat and late successional forest protection. So the idea of do we have any climax species and do we have any um, wildlife that are sensitive to the needs of, um, of those successional species and need to have certain species stay there and not get harvested. Uh, hazard reduction, fire protection, forest, insect and disease protection, your logging roads and landings, your cumulative effect analyses, your long-term sustained yield plans, so making sure that we're we're doing the greatest good for the greatest number, and we're not um, we're not just being short-sighted. We're looking at it for um, the future as well, and making sure that we're have not having wasted use, and that the forest can continually grow and produce at a high level. And then any other special rules um, like county regulations um, or um, any other regulations that might be in place. So um, really making sure that uh, you have your bases covered in terms of the regulations. So 
the way you do that is by having a very detailed timber harvesting plan. Now, there's a lot of people who definitely will say this is part of why logging is so hard in California. But the idea is uh, when you're when you're thinking about uh, the ecosystem and how every little bit of the ecosystem is tied together, it's really important to to just think about it and have to have to think about all of these things uh, and really make sure that what you're doing is the right thing and not only are you doing the right thing that it makes the most sense uh, not only for your landowner but for the ecosystem itself. So what kind of equipment do you use to get this the operations done because we talked about the the big plan that we need so how do we get this stuff actually done? So a feller buncher is um, for me the most fun piece of equipment to go watch do work because this is uh, this piece of equipment is going to go up to a tree it's going to grab onto that tree it's got a big blade that you can see down here at the bottom and it's going to grab onto that tree and then just saw right into that tree cut it off and pull it out and you got a tree like that so it fells the tree it cuts the tree off the stump but then it's also it's a feller buncher so you can grab multiple trees so it grabs one tree cuts it pulls it goes to the next one grabs that tree and the first one cuts it and just keeps doing that and can grab multiple trees at one time you can see this feller buncher right here has like eight eight trees in it right now seven eight trees so it it can cut a lot of trees down pretty quickly after the feller buncher i'm gonna move myself down here after the feller buncher does its work and cuts the trees down it'll lay it'll lay down the trees that it has and then you'll usually have a grapple skitter come in or a tractor um, some something that's going to be able to grab onto the logs and then uh, drag them out of the forest so you can see the skid trail that's being created right here by the by the skitter and that thing's going to pull the logs out of the forest Usually, um, once that happens, the skitter will then take it to the landing. And at the landing, uh, that's where you're going to have a knuckle boom loader or some sort of a loader uh, where it's going to take the trees. The grapple skitter will pull up, kind of drop a bunch of trees right here. And then the knuckle boom loader, um, which is this machine right here, might uh, have a delim delimbing machine attached to it, which is this machine right here. So it's going to pick up one of these logs. It's going to put it through the delimit, delimbing machine and pull it through the delimiter. And then it's going to have a nice just log with no uh, branches that it's going to put down to then be um, pulled away and uh, hauled away to the mill. So you can see you've got these whole trees kind of here in the background. And then what happens is it looks like this guy's working right to left. He picks up these trees right here puts them through the delimbing machine and then these are the logs with no with no limbs that have been delimbed afterwards so felling felling can be very easy uh, in the south because you've got a lot of flat land and uh, easy to maneuver around but out here in California especially in northern California dealing with a lot of topography and a lot of hillsides so felling uh, using machines can get pretty complicated because you can see these machines are lock locked into to the machines or locked into other uh, parts of the land to make sure that they're not tipping over or falling down uh, can be can logging can be a hazardous business uh, I've got a right here I've got a uh, little YouTube a uh, video you can watch in terms of ground-based yarding. So uh, if you want to see uh, yarding, go ahead and hit pause right now and then watch that video and then come on back. But the idea of yarding is that there's some sort of a system set up either um, via cables or um, helicopter yarding is pretty pretty interesting, but some sort of system where the log is being moved. You can't, you can't basically you can't skid the log through the forest um, whether it's because of topography or what 
or whatever else is going on. So you're going to um, you're going to um, use a, a system to to pull the logs through. Um, it it doesn't have to be um, aerial. It can be ground based uh, yarding, but the uh, cable yarding uh, gets pretty interesting. So uh, you can kind of see the cable here. And basically, you got these guy lines, and you got your post, and you got your skyline. So you're you're pulling your logs up, uh, and pulling them up the hill here, because you're harvesting down here. And basically, what you'd have is you'd have some sort of a runner, or some sort of a machine. Um, but usually, um, when I've seen this, I've seen it with uh, with um, people who who are out there setting chokers, and you just basically. You, this uh, the cable will drop a line. There will be somebody there who grabs it, attaches it to a choker that's been wrapped around the logs. The you attach that to the the line. The line gets pulled up. The logs get pulled up, and then the cable takes it up hill here to the to the landing area. And I've got another YouTube video here to show you cable yarding. So if you want, pause the video and watch that. Helicopter yarding. That's where, to me, uh, very interesting to watch. Very, uh, can be very dangerous because you got so many um, big pieces of equipment and moving parts, and it's hard for somebody up in a helicopter to make eye contact with you at all times. So, uh, can be dangerous, but um, really interesting way um, and sometimes very necessary way to harvest trees. So, usually you got your helicopter. Um, you got an emergency release hook, you got your tagline, you got your hooks, uh, you got the chokers which wrap around the logs, you get you attach the chokers to your tagline, and then you, the helicopter will pull up the um, the logs and take them over to the to the landing site. And I did forget to mention that right here, another video if you want to watch helicopter yarding. In terms of transport, that's the third part of of the uh, system, the planning, operation, transport. Transport is also going to be your um, uh, one of your more costly parts of your system, um, and actually one of your uh, harder parts of your system is just trying to find um, competent and um, trustworthy uh, uh, transportation because. It's uh, it's it gets very expensive, and then um, it's very it can be um, just a very hard business in terms of hauling to find people who can do it because uh, it's not um, it doesn't it pays decent, but it also doesn't um, it's not something the idea of, of um, trucking doesn't attract uh, a lot of people these days. It doesn't um, it's not a job that seems inspiring. Um, to a lot of people, so usually you um, you get people who um, are are kind of taking jobs to have jobs instead of having people who are just love trucking. Now, if you find somebody who you're working with who loves trucking, loves hauling, what I would say is keep that person and keep them their number on speed dial and befriend them as much as possible and be as nice to them as much as you can and make them your your best bud because um hauling can be can be very difficult and especially uh if you don't have mills that are close by or um or you have a place that's really restrictive on weight limits or um depending on the operation you have because you might need multiple drivers and multiple trucks and you really it it can be a complicated part of the operation because you could have an area where you just have one logging crew that you're dealing with but maybe you might have to deal with multiple hauling crews because you have to have multiple loads going out per day and you got one going to the sawmill one going to the biomass facility one going to the chip mill and that really um it just logistically becomes very complicated so it's really important to to understand that hauling is extremely important because that's our final step in getting it to the mill. Um, but it's also um, it also it's not just as simple as like let's throw some logs on the truck. You have to have a driver who um, has the right equipment to be able to haul the logs. 
uh, driver who makes sure that um, that they've secured the log safely, a driver that's competent about the weight requirements um, in terms of being sure that they're they're not going to get ticketed, and then also the the hauling drivers, the one pulling into the mill, so they're the one who has to pick up the mill ticket, which is going to um, be uh, basically your receipt that the logs were received, so that you can get paid by the mill. And so our forest products. So the big idea is that was our whole timber harvesting uh, process. That was, you know, all the way from the stump to the mill. So now um, I'm going to kind of skip what happens at the mill because I don't know that um, I can best represent it um, other than, um, you know, look having you look up a video about what happens at a mill and how a tree becomes boards or a tree becomes paper or, or those sorts of things. But we'll talk about the process a little bit. Um, so in California, we have um, wood using industries. You can see for the most part, uh, we're talking about Northern California as opposed to um, Central or Southern California, but we do have some stuff, not much in, let me move myself up here. Not much uh, in Southern California, but you can see around the, the Bakersfield area, we have a few spots. Uh, so in the uh, bottom here, I've attached a link to the uh, to this map to get the, the most updated version of it. Uh, what we have in here, so uh, just to kind of give you an idea of the legend of the map, the yellow areas are uh, areas are um, uh, facilities that used to be active, but they're currently idle. Anything that's green are the, the active facilities right now. So uh, here in Bakersfield, the only active facility we have uh, currently is a uh, energy biomass uh, power plant and that's uh, a little bit um, northeast of town uh, and then um, up near Porterville uh, we've got a um, that's our closest sawmill active sawmill it's a Sierra Forest Products uh, sawmill so uh, for California's forest product Industry sawmills make up the largest sector, but that's a um, majority of that's up in Northern California. Um, they produce about 7% of the U.S. softwood lumber production. So softwood being the idea of conifer trees, pine, mostly that the stuff that becomes uh, dimensional lumber. Um, so for the most part, that's what we're, that's what we're producing in California. A lot of dug fir, um, and then um, pine trees as well. Some some redwoods uh, as well um, make up that softwood production. So in terms of our landowners and forest products, um, what's really uh, important to think about when we're thinking about forest products and this idea of when I when I start thinking about forest products and and the idea of landowners, I start thinking about how am I going from this person's piece of land and looking at their trees and having them say, so what do you think or what's out here and being able to talk to them about it to then, you know, saying that, you know, when I walk into Home Depot or Lowe's and pull this two by four off the shelf, that that came, you know, from this guy's land or from um, this family's trust or from this uh, corporation's uh, land holding and how did it go all the way from that forest to this two by four at Home Depot. Uh, so it's really important to think about uh, that, that you've got somebody's long-term interests in mind and you want to protect their other trees because um, we're still trying to grow um, these, other, these other stands or the other parts of the forest. Uh, you want to guard against damage to the soil because you know the ecosystem is connected and you don't want to you don't want to do any damage to any future rotations um, that you might have on the land but you also want to provide enough volume of whatever desirable material you're cutting down whether it's small trees for pulp wood or chips or whether it's big large trees for saw timber that you make the operation that you're doing profitable because the idea of somebody owning this land and and managing it this way is not only to provide um, a disturbance to the ecosystem and um, accomplish some of some um, civil cultural or forest management objectives, but then also to provide um, 
some income for this landowner. I'm going to move myself out of the way again, down here. Uh, and so um, what kind of forest products can we get? So primary and secondary processing um, gets us um, things like logs, bolts, and round wood pieces. And so uh, a bolt is just a piece of a log uh, and then round wood pieces, uh, any other big uh, pieces that, that we have. Um, from logs and bolts, uh, we can get lumber. We can get veneer, so veneer being thin strips that get cut off of, of a log and then um, can get glued onto uh, cheaper wood. So it's actually you get really nice wood that you then put over the top of cheaper wood to, to give you this um, kind of a, a look of a really nice wood, even though it's actually made up of mostly not um, better wood. You get plywood and other uh, laminated products, uh, things like a uh, particle board and oriented strand board, where you're going to actually cut the, um, you're either going to cut it into layers and then glue those layers together to make a strong product, or you might cut it into, um, in, the, in the case of uh, OSB or oriented strand board, cut it into little strips that get oriented in different ways, and then all that gets it gets glued together, um, but you're you're creating all these different kinds of um, different kinds of products that are used for all sorts of different um, different uses. Posts um, could be cutting things um, as small as, as fence posts or uh, or any sort of other um, post that you would need it to be. Uh, pilings, those are uh, used in uh, like piers and uh, docks. And then poles, um, utility poles being a big, huge uh, use for, uh, for forest products and, and a very uh, lucrative um, forest product to, to be able to grow. If you can grow big, tall, straight trees, people will pay a lot of money for them because uh, Sometimes it's hard to get big, tall, straight trees for for utility poles, and um, you know, with the idea of um, utilities and having cities and all that, poles are quite useful. So uh, once again, move myself out of the way. So we got our forest. Start with our forest. We end up with logs. Those logs, whether they're big logs or small logs. That's going to tell us kind of what we do with them or where they go. So um, they might go to a paper mill where they um, get turned into this big kind of sheet, big thin sheet that gets uh, peeled, dried, cut, it, and sorted. Um, it might be uh, where it gets turned into little um, strands, and those strands get dried and sorted and put into strands. The strands then become oriented strand board or laminated panels or um, fiber board or any of these other things might be where we're trying to do veneer. So we're getting thin strips of stuff. So we're going to peel it. We're going to dry it and cut it. That'll give us our veneers. Our veneers can then become um, sheets of plywood. So little thin pieces all stacked on top of each other might become um, these other types, the parallel stranded panels or laminated veneer panels. Or we might just be taking the logs, cutting them into dimensional lumber, uh, and then uh, that dimensional lumber, um, it can become all sorts of different things. Uh, one of the uh, most interesting um, uses for, uh, for the wood uh, lately has been cross-laminated timbers, um, which are proving to be um, very fire-resistant, very strong, even more fire-resistant and strong than some metal that are being used in buildings. So there's all sorts of different ways. Just because you cut saw logs doesn't mean um, necessarily that it just becomes dimensional lumber and just becomes um, just whatever you would consider kind of a regular piece of wood. It can become paper, which the paper process isn't even on here, but I kind of talked about it briefly where it gets turned into this big thin sheet that they um, gets rolled up and used in different ways, or it can become strands, it can get become veneers, it can become um, dimensional lumber, it can become um, chips, 
used for um, fuel, um, like throwing into wood ovens or uh, biomass. There's all sorts of uses for, for wood. So um, just to go over one process, uh, let's go over kind of the utility pole process. So you got your forest stand, usually in plantations. And why I say plantations as opposed to getting uh, utility poles out of um, areas that aren't artificially planted is that um, when they're artificially planted, usually you're selecting your seedlings. So you've already um, looked at kind of the genetics and you're, you're basically trying to grow the biggest, straightest trees. Whereas if we're going off a of natural regeneration, maybe we get big straight trees, maybe we don't. But with a plantation, we're more, more, more likely to get a big straight tree. So we have our plantation, we're going to bring in our logging crew, and we're going to harvest those trees out of there. Maybe we take them all, maybe we just take some. Depends on your plan and um, your, your stand. So from the stand, we go to the the treating plant um, or the the mill um, whatever uh, whatever it's called this um, example comes from South Africa um, so they call them treating plants we call them mills here it'll get um, it'll get dried it'll get um, treated in um, with whatever coating is needed to make sure that the the pole lasts for a long time and then it gets uh, delivered to wherever it needs to get to. Um, these, this company delivers worldwide, so it uses big shipping containers and sends logs to anywhere off in the world, and the end product ends up being these utility poles out somewhere. And so that's kind of the, the whole process for, um, for uh, a log going from the plantation all the way to um, out here next to somebody's forest along the roadside. But there's all sorts of other uses for logs, and um, you know there, you could do a whole class on timber harvesting and forest products. So I'm just trying to give you a, a big overview so far. So I mean, dimensional lumber is kind of what we're all most used to when we think of what does a tree become. But you've also got things like the the oriented strand board and particle board and fiber board uh, is a big use these days. Uh, pallets. Pallets um, are are usually um, you can cut them from from softwood or hardwood, and um, can you for some pallet wood um, because they're used so so frequently. Um, pallet wood's a, a good business to be in. You might just be cutting it for um, you might just need um, big logs that you're going to then cut into uh, furniture, and and be taking the log itself. And cutting it into specific um, specific uh, dimensions and using um, all sorts of different tools to cut it and turn it into you know the back or leg of a chair or cutting it into um, a table uh, wood to be used in a tabletop. There's all sorts of different uses um, for wood these days. Here's just some more look um, paper. It's uh, often, I think, that people forget about the idea that paper comes from trees and that um, even something like this, these big, huge white rolls, that came from paper and that came from um, a process where you take that the tree, usually smaller trees or um, pieces of trees, and you basically um, grind, it into, grind it into kind of sawdust and little bits and then that gets thrown into the uh, vat and into this chemical mixture that then is able to put it all together and turn it into these big huge rolls of paper. And so lots of different uses, lots of different sizes. Also of dimensional lumber, um, these are uh, these are square cants. Um, one of the big uses for square cants uh, still is um, the railroad industry and being put down uh, underneath the tracks to keep the tracks in place. All sorts of uses for wood. Um, so, our different parts of the tree, how do they get used? So small trees and branches, stuff that's usually referred to as top wood, it gets converted into raw material for reconstituted products, it gets turned into paper, particle and composite board, insulation board, 
It can get turned into a chip for biomass, and it can also get turned into feedstock to produce wood-based chemicals. So here's the paper making process. I'll kind of throw myself down here, back out of the way. Um, just kind of shows you that uh, it takes a lot um, to, to get paper made. So here's our, our wood in our forest, gets uh, debarked and chipped, and then we get it, uh, it can get chemically pulped and mechanically pulped. It has to get cleaned and um, then put in through the whole process for paper making. It's a, it's a big technical process that really you have to almost see um, how many machines and how big of an area it takes to really put this whole thing together to really kind of um, put it into perspective um, how complicated it is to take you know something um, like a tree and then turn it into you know something like a, a notebook right here. And so um, that's that's the the lecture, but I have put a bunch of videos here. So if anybody is interested in watching timber harvesting, all sorts of different types of timber harvesting, um, wanting to see uh, what happens at a mill, the history of timber harvesting, how roads get constructed, how a harvest sale is done, all these different things, I put a bunch of different videos, some with music and some um, where kind of get you fired up and somewhere you just are watching the whole process happening but um, all sorts of different videos do you have to watch all these videos absolutely not but if it's something that interests you I'm hoping that I provide you with uh, enough videos to kind of uh, keep you stimulated so um, that is timber harvesting and um, all the different types of forest products that come from them or um, as best I can do